first of all, thank you all so much for sharing all of your amazing insights across all your disciplines and everything. I think as a student, and I'm saying this for a lot of my other fellow students in here, I'm coming away from this conversation with a lot of excitement and a lot of hope because for me personally, this conversation has unified so many of the different realms of interest for me because I do research at the Burke Museum, for example, but how do I integrate that with like my Filipino heritage? How is that going to inform the way that I interact with academic spaces moving forward? And it's been hitting every single one of our different departments kind of represented here on screen. Um, but I think that there's just so much excitement, at least in my heart, because now I have a ton of friends, family, and colleagues here that see a conversation happening in real time and now they have a model of how they can tap in and listen to their peers even if they're not within their discipline or not within their area of knowledge and i think since we had such a broad topic of ways of knowing it's big it's scary but at the same time it encourages us to again get uncomfortable and be okay with not being comfortable and just being there to listen and respond and be there as yourself and bring what you can to the table. So yeah, that's how I feel about this conversation, but I invite all of you to share your thoughts too. I guess we'll just go down the line. Um, I, I, I'm taking away at least at least three things uh, from Paul and I'm taking this, this intergenerate, the importance of intergenerational conversations, of really listening to the elders, and maybe the flip side of that is, is Katie's uh, you should think like a six-year-old. <laughs> you, you, you should ask why. You should constantly look around and think as you go around campus, even, even some remarkably simple questions. Think about the names of these buildings. Who is Herbert Cowan? Who, 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 what, what is this artwork that's on the walls? Like if you just stop and ask questions about literally where you are, things open up. Sometimes unsettling things and things that you can take to learn about how we got here but also how the world can be different. Uh, I think that, you know, I think in lots of our classes we learn really depressing things, but we don't do it to depress you. We really do it to kind of give you a sense of how this, how we got to this place, but then also how the world could be otherwise. So I, I think thinking like a six-year-old can be helpful. Um, I think for me, I'm going to I'm really taking away, I think this, the, the concept of openness um, has come up a few times this evening and just how important it is for us to be open to different experiences, different viewpoints, different ways of knowing. And the openness, I think, also implies um, an openness to engaging with these hard questions. You know, when we're talking about generative AI, we need to be actively engaging in these questions because if we don't, someone else is going to decide for us what the, what the future will look like. Um, and and yeah, so the openness implies an engagement, which I really think is so important because we it's a way for us to maintain our agency. Um, and and then I think you know the idea of humility has really um, come across and. Um, and just knowing that we don't know it all, and that's okay, and there's there's excitement in that. But you know, walking around and asking it, like, what's around me, and why is it here? Um, that requires a certain humility that you don't know all the answers yet. And um, so that's what I'm going to try and bring into the next little while: is um, an openness and um, humility and, and a readiness to engage. Um, I, 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 I'm coming back to the old story about the, click, the creation story of the click and tap basket around the young girl who didn't have something to contribute to her village. And she, I'm gonna cut this to two minutes. <laughs> she took off from the village because she couldn't find a place to be in the community. And she wandered off and she sat down under Grandfather Cedar. Grandfather Cedar asked her what was wrong. She wanted something to do. You young scholars, you are on this journey. So as he sat there, he instructed her how to tend a root and how to start to make a basket. He also said you have to take the test. Take it down to the water and dip it. And if it holds the water, 
you have completed your work. She took it down, dipped it, water went through. She was upset. You're upset when you fail a test. <laughs> he said, take this route, start that process again. She does. And she gets going and she gets the base of the basket and he says, now pack your things and start, start walking and see what happens. And as she went, she met many mentors. She met salmon, mountains, bear, horse. She met rattlesnake. And on those journeys, they said, weave this design into your basket. This is what I've taught you. When she was done, when she felt she was done, she finished the top. She came back to Cedar, Grandfather Cedar, and said, Here's my basket. And he says, What have you learned on your journey? She shared all of these things, all of these different things. He says, Now you do the test. Take it to the water. She takes it to the water, she takes it, she raises it up. No water. He says, you are now a basket weaver. You have a skill to take back to your community, and it's time for you to go off. You are making your basket. You are building that knowledge. You are establishing and identifying your place and what you're going to give back to society. I wish you luck and goodness and love on that journey. So remember those mentors and weave those, those, those lessons, those conversations. Weave them into your knowledge base, into your basket. Put your phones away, say hello, <laughs> and connect.